Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch with some news. I know many of you have been waiting a very long time for Blender 2.80 beta is finally amongst us. So Blender 2.80 is a reality in beta form. However, you're not gonna see a whole lot of hands-on in this particular video because I can't download it. It seems like their servers are getting absolutely slaughtered. I've made a number of different attempts and finally I just gave up and I'm gonna make this video without any hands-on footage. Truth of the matter is though, I also have to jump back in and re-familiarize myself with it. Now I've been covering 2.80's development for the last couple of months now and in that time the user interface has had some massive changes now one of the things about this release this one's going to be polarizing but left click select is finally the default now I'm in team left click I think left click select is just the way the world worked um, and blender was being contrarian with their approach but I know a lot of people think that the exact opposite is true so I know that's going to be a hotly debated topic around blender 280's release but don't worry it is completely configurable so if you want to go back to the other mechanism you can so i just believe this new official default change is going to be mostly applicable for tutorials documentation that kind of stuff so what exactly is blender 2.80 beta all about why are people so excited so why are they excited to the point where they're clogging the blender download servers well this is a pretty major release actually and the bit there's some huge major new features of real-time pbr based viewport improvements to the new grease pencils so 2d animation support built in there GLTF export support, an updated UI, and a whole lot more. So we're just going to basically go through the future, the overview page of what to expect in Blender 2.80. So one, one thing I just mentioned earlier on is the user interface has been really revamped. Now I'm going to show you a video that's going to go through some of these details. Um, so I'm just going to gloss over it, but they have made some profound changes to the UI. And that is going to be very polarizing among the community. But for the most part, they've gotten a much more consistent look, a high contrast look. Um, the the, the new user interface at least is definitely more modern. Is it an improvement? Well, that's going to be up to individuals to decide. I like it better. But then again, there are some people out there that think Blender 2.4 was the peak of UI development and everything since has been a downward slide. So I know there are definitely going to be some people that disagree. Now, the star of the show, though, obviously is EV. Now, EV is a real-time physically based renderer. Uh, so you can now, uh, if you're doing game development specifically, you can see pretty much exactly what your game is going to look like directly in the viewport. The viewport just got so much better. Plus you've got support for advanced features such as volumetric, screen space reflections, refractions, uh, subsurface scattering, soft and just contact shadows, depth of field, camera motion blur, and bloom. The new renderer really has to be seen uh, to really believe. It is a staggeringly pretty and quick render. It really changes the way you use Blender uh, and it will be the one feature that makes it very hard to go back to Blender 2.79. Uh, along with EV obviously is the viewport I'm not sure why they're splitting that into two different tasks, but do be aware uh, you will now need OpenGL Core 3.3. Now, I think that's anything since an HD 4000 graphics card, so most graphics cards should support this, but it, it is getting away from it. used to be Blender would run on your toaster. Now, you know, you need to have at least a microwave to run Blender. So there is a change there you should be aware of. Now, another big change that's happened in Blender um, 2.80's development, and this has been going on for a very long time, is the grease pencil. Now the grease pencil originally came to life as a way to do markups on your screen. So basically you could, you know, check this out or what do you think of this or just notations or narrations to yourself or to your team. Now it's been turned into a full-blown 2D art program. So you can see right here, Grease Pencil is no longer just a stroke. It is now a real Blender object with huge improvements to brushes and tools. And that also can be fully animated now. So there's a couple of videos to check out. Of course, I will toss this link down below as well. So if you want to learn more about the Grease Pencil, and this is one of those areas where I actually haven't used it a whole lot, I intend to jump in in much more detail and do a video in the future about the new Grease Pencil functionality. So stay tuned for that. Um, we've also got a collection. So it used to be that you could only have 20 layers in your Blender scene. Uh, now you can organize your scene into collections and you can have, I believe, an infinite number of them. Uh, we've also got improvements of filtering in the outlier or outliner so you can better deal with your new collection system. And on top of that, we've got dependency graph improvements. Uh, we've got cycles improvements, the renderer. Um, we've got multi-object editing, cloth physics, and more. If you want to get into that and more part, there is a detailed release notes. This is very much uh, a work in progress. So there's 
it's not all fully here, but uh, there is definitely a lot more going on. Now, each one of these is, in fact, a drill down, so you can see the extent of this update. There is a huge number of things that have been changed. So this is just an importing. Uh, so we've got you know a whole lot going on there. Um, tools, user interface updates. The interface was user interface was definitely revamped a whole lot, including uh, completely new hotkey setups. We now have. Um, the Pi menu as default. So if you'd like Maya's approach to UI where you had all your menus basically orbiting around your uh, mouse cursor, that is the new functionality in Blender. Uh, so this is going to be a huge learning curve for Blender 2.7 users. So there is so much that was changed. But at the end, it is still the same core open source 3D program that we know and love. There's just going to be a bit of an adapting curve to get up to speed with what is different. And don't worry, I'm actually thinking about doing a full you know 20 30 part step by step here's how you can learn to use blender 2.80 uh, text and video series I think so let me know if you guys are interested in a full hands up for uh, complete beginner to quasi proficient which is I guess the level I would put myself at kind of tutorial basically just something to get it so if you have never used blender before in your life this will get you up and going let me know if that interests you or not now in the meantime blender has published this video as well this breaks through the five kind of key features of Blender, things like, again, EV, the grease pencil, the, the reorg of layers, that kind of stuff. So if you're looking for more hands-on demonstration of what Blender 2.80 is capable of, well, Blender themselves obviously have access to Blender 2.80, so they have done so. Myself, I do not quite have access yet, but once I do actually have it downloaded, get a little bit more comps under my um, belt, I'm going to do a few more videos on Blender. Let me know specifically what areas you would like to see covered. So I'm sorry I can't get more detailed with actually presenting what each one of these features is. As I mentioned a couple times, I just can't download it and I'm imagining if you want to check out Blender 2.80 expect uh, it to take a while it's taken me a little over an hour now I had a lot of timeouts and errors you're probably going to have the same thing there's just a huge amount of demand because this is a very hotly anticipated beta so I'm excited to see it here I decided I'd throw together a news post so you guys also were aware that it is out there and now I turn over questions to you are you excited about Blender 2.80 what is the feature that you are all in about I know EV is definitely a big one but what about that UI changes? Is that something you're down with or are you not comfortable with the kind of stuff they've changed here? And of course, directly of interest to game developers, this is also the first release where the Blender game engine is officially gone. Now, somewhere in the future, there is going to be interactive mode, which is going to bring some of that functionality back, but not turning Blender into a game engine. That is uh, That ship has sailed. That is not going to happen again. If you want to use Blender as a game engine, you are better off checking out Armory, which fortunately I've covered on the station, or uh, Verge 3D, which I have not yet covered on the station. So let me know what you think of all of these changes. Are you excited about Blender 2.80? Are you a Blender game engine purist and you're just furiated that it's no longer supported? Do you like the UI changes or would you rather it just stuck with things as they were? Let me know. Comments down below. And uh, yeah, talk to you all later. Goodbye.